Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and in this video I'm going to talk about the brand new OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.2 update for unsupported Macs. I'm going to go over all the changes and fixes in this release, which is ready for the brand new macOS Monterey 12.2 update and the macOS Big Sur 11.6.3 update. I'm also going to go over the status of universal control and unlocking it for unsupported Macs. we got a lot to cover, let's jump in and get started. Okay, let's go over the changes in the 0.4.2 update. Later in the video, I walk over how to update the app, but after a while, it's gonna be really cut and dry. I'm only going over it again in this video in case you missed it in the previous two, especially I wanted to go over the changes in the GUI app and the offline app. Most of the future videos will just go over the changes and anything that you need to know about updating or the changes and features of each update. There's some really nice ch changes in this update. And one of the first ones is to the GUI app and it has to do with the downloading the full installer application in the options. So you can see I'm running OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.0 in here. This will change over time. Now, if you look, the beta identifier was added to the installer menu. So if you come here and you say, I can just download 12.2 right here. If you're not keeping an eye and you don't understand how build versions work, you might click on this and then you're inadvertently installing a beta version of the full installer. So if you look over here at our 0.4 4.2 that was changed to add the beta here so you don't accidentally click on this instead of this one which is the one you really need and that's how you can tell it's a full installer of a production version because of the smaller build number and anything that usually has a letter at the end is usually a beta version. Another thing was is that there was actually some users that were using OpenCore Legacy Patcher to run content caching server. Now what's nice is that there was another option to add content caching support and configurability so if you go into the settings here, you can see content caching was added here as another option. Also, as I talk about later in the video, universal control was added to remove that blacklisted for supported Macs from around 2015 to 2017. And notice that it, again, Mac OS Monterey 12.3 or newer is required to be able to use universal control and iPad OS 15.4 or newer. Also in 12.3, beta, it actually broke some power management settings and those were fixed in this version of OpenCore Legacy Patcher. So if you're updating to that, you want to make sure that you update to OpenCore Legacy Patcher 0.4.2 to fix those issues. Another thing that was added was for the TUI app, they changed the icon so you can differentiate the different versions if you're running the GUI app and the TUI app. So let's take a look at that on our 2011 MacBook Pro here. You can see we're running our GUI app, but when we go into the applications folder, I also have the TUI app installed and we can take a look closer look at that icon. You can see that the little terminal application icon was added so you can tell that this is the TUI version. That was a nice little change. And finally here, a bit big fix, okay? You'll notice that if you are running like, for example, a 2011 iMac, that particular model and a lot of other different models using the TerraScale 2 GPU has a strobing effect after you install the patcher in macOS Monitor or macOS Big Sur. What was instructed in the past to do, install Res Extreme or switch Res X to be able to turn off that strobing and fix that issue. With 0.4.2 and we no longer have to install either app it's all the strobing is now fixed and that is a wonderful fix for this release okay let's first talk about how to get the brand new open core legacy patcher 0.4.2 update and this is going to be the same for every new update that comes after i would normally tell you to go to the open core legacy patcher page click on github over here then go to the releases tab over here then scroll all the way down to the bottom and you could see the downloads here but with the brand new gui or the graphical user interface app that was totally redesigned if you missed the previous videos where i talked talked about it, there's a brand new updater option. So let's open up a previous version of the GUI app so we can look at what that looks like when it pops up. It immediately checks and says, hey, you're on 0.4.0 and there's a brand new version 0.4.2. So that lets you know immediately that there's a new update to go out to grab the application, download it and install it onto your Mac. So all we need to do is click view on GitHub and it'll bring us right to the same page that we were looking at. Now, the other thing that I wanted to make sure that you were aware 
of if you missed the previous videos is that there's a brand new GUI offline app. And you might think, what does that mean? The GUI offline app is if you have an older Mac that requires Wi-Fi patches. For macOS Monterey, the Wi-Fi patches for older Macs for around 2011 or 2010 and lower were removed. And you might say to yourself, well, how do I know I'm one of those Macs? The easy way to do it is to look in the app itself and check. So let's move over to our late 2011 MacBook Pro here. We've got Open Core Legacy Patcher open here, and all we need to do is click on Post Root Patch here, and this will tell us what's available for this machine. So for this one, we have to install the graphics acceleration patches, but it will also say Wi-Fi patches here. If you see that, you know that you will need the offline app because that will include all the drivers in there for you to be able to install it. Because if you install the 12.2 update now, restarted, and it can't, comes back up, Wi-Fi will not be working and you'll be unable to install the post volume patches because it can't download them from the server. They're all built into that offline app that you see here and that's why it's 521 megabytes instead of 41.3 megabytes that doesn't include those drivers. If you if you have a Mac around 2010 to 2011 and you're confused still, there's nothing wrong with downloading the offline app so you're safe no matter what and that's totally fine. And that's how to get the brand new open Core Legacy Patcher updates. All right, let's get it installed on this 2011 MacBook Pro here. Okay, to update, all we need to do is open up our Open Core Legacy Patcher GUI app here. We'll double click, it'll open up, and this is 0.4.0 on this particular version. It says, hey, there's a brand new version, 0.4.2, just like we just talked about earlier. We'll click on View on GitHub. Now, before we download, we wanna close the app. We'll close the app here, go up to here and hit close open core patcher. Then we can scroll down here and we can get the open core legacy patcher GUI app. We'll let that download here and when it's done, it'll jump up and down in the downloads folder. We will minimize this window. We'll have applications open. We'll open up the downloads folder. We'll drag this right into our applications folder. It'll say, hey, there's one already there called that name. Yes, we want to replace that with a brand new version. And that's it. We'll double click on this. We'll get a notification that we are we sure that this is the application that we download from the internet it is so we'll click on open and here's our brand new open core legacy patcher 0.4.2 application this is only step one you've already installed it the brand new application but that does not mean that the installation on your hard drive has been updated so to do that we need to go into the settings and change any settings that you need to and all the settings in the GUI app are automatically selected for your hardware model and in this case a MacBook Pro 8 comma 3 so in the only thing that I normally do is unclick on show boot picker so it boots up like a normal Mac and it doesn't stop at the boot selection screen. So once I click that off, we can return to the main menu, click on build and install open core, click on build open core, wait till it's finished and then it's done. And then we can click on install open core. Which drive do you want to install it on? There's only one hard drive in the system. Usually make sure that you have any attached drives or USB drives disconnected. Before you do this, just so you don't get it confused, click on disk zero is usually default internal drive. We'll click on that and we want to install it on the EFI partition and then we'll have to enter in our password to do so. Hit OK. And that's it. It'll mount the EFI partition. It'll unmount it and it'll say open core transfer complete. And we can return to the main menu. You've got the brand new version and all the fixes that were included in this update installed to your Mac. If you want to install an, a software update like Mac OS 12.2, you'll see it in here as 12.2. All you need to do is click on update now here and you can see the size of the update. Once it starts to download, now keep in mind, there's been a lot of people that might say, hey, this update is 11 gigabytes in size. Why am I downloading the full installer? Well, if you have to install the post volume patches on your Mac, it has to download the full update 11 gigabytes, like you can see here, 11.3.2 for the installation. If your Mac is newer and you do not need any of the post volume patches, then you will get the Delta update, which is anywhere between two and three gigabytes in size. So if you see that, that's normal. 
Okay, we're back up after the 12.2 update. Now all we need to do is install the post volume patches. If you're not sure if your Mac needs that, again, like I mentioned earlier in the video, all you need to do is click on install post volume patch button and it'll tell you right here which patches are available for your Mac. If it says no patches available, you don't have to do anything, you're done. But if it says graphics or Wi-Fi patches, you need to install this patch or your Mac will be running slower or your Wi-Fi might not be working. So we'll click on install or start the root patching and what it's going to say is that the application has to be restarted as run as root or as the administrator so we will click yes to be able to do that the application will automatically count down and close in the background and prompt you to restart the app as an administrator we'll type in our administrator password here and it'll close in about five seconds here. Three, two, one, and the previous app is closed. Okay, now that the application is running as an administrator, as root, we can click on post install root patch again, and then click on start root patching. It's gonna be immediately start to download the post volume patches. And as you can see, it's 142 megabytes for this late 2011 MacBook Pro. And we talked about the offline app, how it's 500 megabytes. That includes all the patches for the older models. And that's why doing it this way, you only download what you need. You'll see that it'll immediately start to patch all the drivers here. And then when it's done at the very end, you'll see that it'll ask you to restart your Mac for the patch installation to be complete. And we'll give it a second here to finish. And there we go. Please reboot the machine for the patches to take effect. And you are done installing the post volume patches on your newly updated Mac. Now let's talk about universal control. Universal control is compatible with unsupported Macs in macOS Monterey 12.3. And if you haven't seen my video, I actually use a mid 2014 MacBook Pro running 12.3 with universal control. How cool is that, right? For those unsupported Macs with macOS Monterey 12.3, you need at least a Bluetooth 4.0 card in it. So you can either upgrade the card or have your Mac a 4.0 card from the factory. So you can go to everymac.com and I'll put a link in the description with this. You can see when Apple started putting in the 4.0 cards around late 2012 so those Macs are compatible with universal control right out of the box with, with open core legacy patcher now if you have a newer Mac that is compatible with Mac OS Monterey, like a 2015, 16, or 17, and you wanna be able to use universal control, you can't unless you unlock it with Open Core Legacy Patcher. Now, if we open up the app here, we can see in one of the settings that the ability to use native models is right here. So you click on that, and now you can boot up your Mac with Open Core Legacy Patcher to be able to unlock universal control for your 2015 all the way to 2017 for Apple saying, hey, you can't use universal control on this Mac, even though you can. The developers of Open Core Legacy Patcher unlock that blacklist so it's fully compatible. Now, that's the next video that I'm working on is to show you how to do that and walk you through the entire process on how to unlock universal control on your unsupported Mac from 2000. 12 all the way to 2017 or 2018. So look for that soon. Thanks for watching this video and we'll catch you in the next one.